Bahar, Tommy Kedman, respect his brothers and sisters, assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. I'll just take three minutes. Uh, I'm here not just uh, representing myself, I am representing my father, Mr. Rahman Izami, here. And I'll just talk two things about the case, uh, and then I'll, I'll just uh, let the uh, rest of the speakers speak. Uh, one of the cases, uh, one of the charges that was brought against my father was the murder of Maulana Kusimuddin, who was undoubtedly murdered by the Pakistani army in 1971. My sympathy goes to the family of Maulana Kusimuddin. And my father was charged for his murder, and he was found guilty. Now, I came to know that uh, the children of Maulana Kusimuddin lives in Dallas. Uh, so I gathered uh, their number, and his son's name is Shibli. I called uh, one of the days last year uh, to Mr. Shibli and I had a nice conversation with Shibli. Uh, and Shibli said that uh, we actually are not going home in last 15 years. We came to Dallas, my mom came to Dallas, our family is in Dallas, we don't go back home. And to be honest with you, uh, in 1971 we never heard of your father. We heard of other Jamaat leaders like Maulana Subhan, who was uh, an MLA in 1971. But we never heard of your father. We heard the name of your father in 2001 when we, he became a minister. So I told him that uh, there is a witness named Hamid. And that witness uh, testified that you told Hamid that uh, my father killed your father. He said, that's absolutely not. And there was a report published based on our conversation in the national newspaper. But again, those reports were not paid any heed to. The hearsay evidence of somebody who is a political leader, who belongs to the politics of Awam Ali, his witness was taken at face value. So this is how this court is running. The victims of the family members are not the witness here. They are alive, but they're not the witness. The witness are somebody that has no relationship with the victim's family. Their only affiliation is just the politics that they're into. The second uh, thing that probably all of you know, I spoke about that many times, uh, also in the National Press Club, there was another key witness. His name is Nanu. And he was recorded to be saying that he was forced into this witness. He was kidnapped, he was said uh, to be heard that uh, he was kidnapped by army officials and in the presence of Prime Minister herself and the State Minister at that time, Shamsul Tuku, they forced him to comply with whatever they want him to say, otherwise his son will lose the job as a police officer and if he delivers the witness, he will be given a loan of close to one million taka, which probably he would never have to pay back. And when that tape came out, uh, we actually had that tape verified by an independent organization based in uh, North South Carolina. And the result came out to be astonishingly uh, positive. Uh, uh, Mr. Nanu's voice, which we recorded in the tape, it was 99.9% certainty, confidence level, that they have reported that it was the voice of Nanu. And they undergone some stress tests. When Nanu was saying that he was kidnapped, the stress test suggested that 99.9% of uh, confidence level that he was telling the truth. So, this kind of witness were brought to victimize leaders. Not only that, you see that so far, three of those people who were undergoing trial died in prison. You know about Maulana uh, A.K.M. Yusuf, who was a very elderly and respectable person who just underwent an open heart surgery. He was arrested, he was facing the charges, and while facing the charges, he passed away. Then you have, you know about Abdul Ali who passed away, and you know Professor Ghulam Azum who passed away in the prison. So this judicial murder is going on. It's not just Brother Abdul Qadir Mullah, it was also those three individuals, and 
you know that Molana Saidi is right now having very critical heart condition. So let's all pray for this. And the fight against this injustice cannot be done by Tabi alone, cannot be done by just few individuals. It has to be done by all of us. You don't have to be a sympathizer of Jamaat Islami to speak against this injustice. You just have to be a human to speak against this injustice. And there is a lot we can do. I really appreciate a lot of you guys took a trip in front of White House when we protested. These are all good, but we have to do a lot more than that. All of us, we need to be active in our local community. We, live, we need to make our representatives, congressmen and senators aware of it. And it has to start from ground level. We have to educate others by writing on the newspapers, blogs and tweeters. And each of us can make a difference. So from here, I would urge all of you to be vocal against the injustice that's going on in Bangladesh. Because it's not one person's cause, it's the cause of all human beings. Thank you very much. Our next speaker.